So I was listening to a live stream from Keith Woods and Morgoth's review, and they invited this other guy, Dangerfield, onto the stream. Morgoth's is from Northern England. Dangerfield is, I guess, originally from London or around there. Or Keith Woods is from Ireland. So Morgoth's and Keith Woods, they're both nationalists. Keith Woods is more of a national socialist. I like both of their content. I like the I especially like Morgoth's content. It's it's fantastic content. I recommend his channel. I, I also recommend Keith Woods, whom I recently discovered. Like he's only I think in his mid twenties, but very sharp guy. Just just about as sharp as Nick Fuentes. A lot deeper than Nick Fuentes. Nick Fuentes is a good can talk on his feet well, but he never brings such depth intellectually to his shows the way Keith brings to his videos. Dangerfield, I've only seen this guy briefly once before. His personality put me a bit off, so I didn't follow him, but I didn't I didn't I don't have anything against him. It just I didn't really something was like, oh this guy's a bit strange or he's not he's not quite my cup of tea, but nice and nice enough guy. So I didn't follow him, but I must say that after listening to Dangerfield in his uh, ex, you know, conversation with Morgoth and Keith Woods. I have a lot more respect for him. Partially, I mean, let me put it this way: I can, un I understand. I think he actually debated his point pretty well when he was responding to Morgoth, because Dangerfield is a bit of a not a loose cannon, but a, like a, he's living in Cambodia, I believe. He has a Cambodian girlfriend. He seems to be kind of settling down there. And he's older, like he's in his late 40s or something like that. He's a bit older, so I don't know how old... I mean, Keith Woods is relatively young. Morgoth, I don't know. I don't think Morgoth is as old as I originally thought, though. I mean, I'm assuming Morgoth is in his 30s. But I don't... He, I might even be older than him, for all I know. But he, he sounds older because of his voice. But anyways, Morgoth could not wrap his head around the fact that Dangerfield is rolling in nationalist circles. But he's living in uh, Southeast Asia and could very well have mixed children. So Morgoth couldn't understand, like, aren't you benefiting from globalism, Dangerfield? He asked him, from being able to live in Cambodia. And I don't remember what Dangerfield said in response, but I think Morgoth's question was partially true. I mean, yes, we can benefit from the New World Order going to new cultures and being able to live in new places but that that's a bit of a stretch too that's a very broad net net you're casting there because because then i mean you could just throw everything in with the modern world i mean and i guess if you would re completely reject the modern world then you got to give up all the perks as well having said that i mean i mean there's globalism and then there's there's been globalization for hundreds of years like for over a thousand years for a Throughout the whole human history, there, there have always been people and tribes and groups of people leaving their home tribes and living amongst foreigners. That's just something that happens. So Dangerfield is a different type. He's a different psychological type than Morgoth. Morgoth is just a natural conservative type uh, racially. Dangerfield says so himself. I mean, he was, I guess, more of a partier, like communist when he was younger and uh, did a lot of drugs and uh, most of his friends from that time are n no longer living and so he you know he went through his troubled years so for him like economically he can't live in England uh, with the same standard of life it's just not possible and this is the one thing that which is so true but nationalists white nationalists don't like this they don't like because well not all of them but they but it's like you got to stay here make make babies make kids and enjoy your life here and and contribute to saving your your culture here but and he's still and but dangerfield is very accurately demolishing morgoth's perspective because he's like well like what do you expect i have a nice house here it's big uh like i can it's only 200 bucks a month whereas in london he was paying like 2,600 pounds per month for this small, tiny little place. And he's just like, my life is so much materially better here. And like, 
he's talking about how they get he gets to visit his girlfriend's family it's like a large family they're all like they're working for the future they're gonna you know they're they're reproducing for the future he feels that accepted by them and i mean you know you could be more skeptical and say oh well what if they in morgoth's act asking well what if they kick you out what if things change in the future and i mean i get that ask that question about my involvement with ghana this is how i can see i can sympathize more with dangerfield even though intellectually i'm also close to to morgoth it's like i'm between uh morgoth and keith woods and and dangerfield on this because the third position for me is christianity because none of these guys are talking about christianity i don't think dangerfield is interested in christianity so so if you go to cambodia or southeast asia that's buddhist or whatever it's, it's useful for me to make this video because i can lay out how i feel about this issue of race genes gets talked about a lot i've talked about it myself of course there's genetic differences but i don't like this trend recently that everything is genes 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 everything is empirical like edward dr edward dutton who i like i like dr ed edward dutton hello 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 uh, check out his channel but he is big on just empiricism and it's all about genes and correlations he says this correlates with that he uses the word correlates a lot and, and i mean there's a lot of wisdom in what he's saying and truth but I don't like this narrow focus on genes because he's an atheist, he, but then he admits that religious people are more healthy. I mean, he, he, he doesn't just admit that. He, he makes videos which are favorable to Christianity. I'm talking about Dr. Edward Dutton. I don't mean to be going off topic, but if you, if you listen in, in the dissident right circles, you will likely have heard of these characters. These are all people with big channels. There's this worldliness. Like, See, the problem with National Socialism for me and any sort of fascism well, I, I mean i could be wrong educate me if i'm wrong i'm willing to to change my mind on this but like the third reich was the highest form of expression like that was the highest divinity in their worldview like serving the german people and for the good of the german people that was like the best good you could do and, and that you could believe in but that's just seem that's just so disappointing to me Christianity, you can argue, had been decaying in Germany and in much of Europe since the Protestant Reformation. Not that the Catholic Church was perfect either, but it was really decaying by the 20th century. You could blame the Bolsheviks. The National Socialists in Germany, they were responding to a lot of crap thrown their way and, and to a potential Bolshevik takeover of much of Europe. But, I mean, they... The Bolsheviks hated religion, but then, so they're carrying forward that uh, pattern among Germany's national socialists back in the 30s, that, in, that religion was, Christianity specifically, it's like this comment I see, I don't, it's not, I don't think it's so common, but you see this a lot on uh, YouTube comments in, in these sorts of dissident right videos. Anyone mentions Christianity, and then sometimes you'll get these people, and the comment is always very similar. It's something along the lines of, Give up your outdated Christian faith, your Abrahamic religion. They like to use the word Abrahamic, some, something as if calling something Abrahamic is, is therefore like a smoking gun that you shouldn't... For me, I don't even get it. Like, But then they're like, give up this Abrahamic uh, faith, um, the, this Jewish, uh, this outdated, outdated Hebrew Jewish Abrahamic uh, faith, and then they say, go back to your pagan... Your, your natural European pagan religion. And they do this apparently not tongue-in-cheek. There are legitimate people out there imploring people to give up their, in their eyes, Jewish Christian faith. Like, it's, it's, really, Jew it's really Judaism. It's actually not Christianity. It's just you've been cucked by the Jews and you, uh, you accepted Christianity, <laughs> even though that doesn't make sense on so many levels. But I can't go into that here. But yes, obviously, Christianity did come from the Jews. No one's denying that. I'm just saying there's this skepticism of Christianity, I think. And it just goes without saying that. Like, I don't think Morgoth's review is actually interested in Christianity. I don't know if Keith Woods might be. I don't know as much about him. I don't get the sense that Dangerfield is in the least interested with Christianity. I could be wrong. And I think that's pretty par for the course in these dissident right circles. Most of them acknowledge Christianity. They see it as something that united us in the past. They see it as a, a useful expedient to bring us together. But at the same time, I don't think they really 
care that much about the teachings of Christianity. I just don't think that a lot of them have really thought it through. Are we really going to find this deep satisfaction in this abstract notion of our race, our, our people? Is that really going to fulfill us uh, deeply? Is that really going to cause us to live morally? Or is it going to cause more chaos? I don't know, but I mean, I would assume that they even accept evolution because a lot of this racial talk ties in neatly with evolution. But that's, you can't be a Christian and accept evolution. I mean, I know some Christians do, but I think that's heretical. It, go, it goes directly against the teachings. Yes, there is natural selection. Obviously, there is, there is uh, modification going on all the time. But you have to accept as a Christian that all people come from Adam and Eve. That's going to throw a wrench into some of your theories. Morgoth will spend a lot of time discussing postmodernism, the lack of meaning, the spiritual void in humans, and but he just none of them seem to make the final step where it's like, okay, okay, let's go straight to the matter of the soul and God and the order of creation in the universe. Do they even believe that there is a soul? Is this something you would even do you even hear the soul discussed in dissident right? videos. If you have, let me know because I have not even heard that concept discussed. And what does that tell you about the dissident right? If they don't even discuss the concept of a soul. I mean, some pagans might, so I'll give them that. At least the pagans are more upfront about it. They're like, yes, we can go back to paganism and there is a soul. I just don't think that works. I think that leads to demonic worship. But most dissident rights, they don't want to go into paganism, but they don't want to take Christianity seriously either. They think that we can just have this a national body politic, this keep our people pure racially. That'll work for a while, but then it'll start to fall apart because you won't be satisfying God and you won't be satisfying the needs of, of your soul. God came to give a law for all people on earth, all races. Well, obviously, I have to stand with God at the top. So I can't, I can't make race supreme, but I will advocate for the white race because just like you should advocate for any people that wrong is being done to them, but because it's my people, relatively speaking, um, you're going to want to advocate for them first. And, and, and uh, North America should be for North, North Americans and the same for Europe, of course. But when it comes to this purest viewpoint that we got to keep our people like as close to 100% pure as possible. And it seemed like Morgoth actually, that's what he believes. He, he basically said it literally. Dangerfield is like, well, I believe Europe should be for Europeans, but I don't believe that any society needs to be 0% foreigners within their midst. And I, I, on that point, I'm with Dangerfield. And yes, of course, race is a real thing. Yes, of course, majorities should remain majorities in their home countries and cultures should not be displaced by multiculturalism. But I don't want this 100% ethno state. Uh, that's a little too much for me. But I mean, I can understand if that's what you want. I mean, to a natural, to some degree, those communities are going to are going to produce themselves anyways, like on a small scale in some small towns. It'll be all like a certain group of people, certain small number of families just making up a whole town. I mean, you could have that on a societal scale. Um, but there's there's always been some degree of mixing to some degree. And I think he does actually say do not race mix in certain places in the Bible in the Old Testament. But you see, the thing is, I think that's because certain pla peoples had fallen away from God. That's the main criterion. He's not talking about the, the genetics. It is possible for sin to be passed along, in other words. A, sin, a certain sinful nature that your people has fallen away from God. But then God can make exceptions for, for some people to be re redeemed from among them, while he may maintain certain judgments against that people as a whole. He recognizes that there are di different peoples in the world. That's clear in the Bible. But what's interesting to me is that also, when people turn away from God, it's very clear that he, he says this, and this happens constantly throughout the Old Testament, is that other people will come to rule over you. And that's what we're also seeing today, like white people are being ruled over. And then you can, 
get angry all the, and, 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 and say, oh, we need purity and all this stuff. But then look at the moral decay of white people. Look at how we let women be on a pedestal and we just accepted feminism. And uh, it's just amazing. Devin Stack from Black Pill, this is another thing. He's probably a Protestant Christian. He be believes in his morals. I like Devin Stack. I like Black Pill. I love his content. But he's sort of sour about something. You know, he's sour about the whole idea of MGTOW. And that's something that, you know, I've, I've explained my philosophical position where I stand. Yeah, it's true. Most men will be unhappy if they don't partner up with a woman in their life. 90% of men, 85%, more than nine, nine, I don't know, but the, the, it'll be the majority of men. So Devin Stack was pointing that out. He's like, well, if you go MGTOW, if you go, or if you just, for whatever reason, don't plan, have a plan B economically, and you end up forsaking a family because you only pursued yourself and... and then you're, you're going to end up like Carl and no one will remember you. And he knew this guy, guy Carl, and Carl uh, ended up addicted to porn and fat and living alone and just a pathetic life. And uh, it just wasn't very wasn't very good. It's like, okay, that's an anecdote. And yeah, that's going to happen for, for a lot of men. But, but you see, why am I bringing up the example of Devin Stack complaining about men not marrying? It's because he's, at, on the one hand, right, and I don't disagree with anything I'm saying. Uh, I mean, I worry about being alone. Who doesn't, right? No one wants to be alone. And yes, of course, it's in a natural, healthy society. Even I would like to link up with a woman. But the thing is, the West is fucked. And you can talk about the racial dynamic, but the ra that, that's like a further step down from the core moral decay. And you can believe in civilizational cycles, like, oh, we're just going down. But that doesn't help you either. Because then you're saying, oh, well, we're just at the mercy of this, this wave. You can't excuse your own moral decay. You have to call out things for what they are. And we're not following God's commandments, so we have been cast down. You know, racial distinctions can be superseded if different peoples are turning towards God. I'm not advocating for racial mixing. I'm just saying that you have to be a little more open-minded when it comes to having other people in your midst. If they're Christians, if they're true Christians... And you can't even find true Christians in so much... I mean, I wouldn't... You could say I'm not a true Christian. I'm trying to get there. We're all trying to get there. But, like, hypothetically, like, in the West right now, like, we're so fallen away from searching God and trying to live, you know, according to what God taught us that I don't even really care so much about the race itself because what would be the good of preserving your race if you become a pagan people? then we should be eliminated. Then we, if, if all the white race is going to become pagan, then, then let God wipe us from off the face of the earth. But I don't believe that's going to happen because I think actually the opposite is going to happen. I'm, so I'm quite optimistic about that. You should be optimistic about that too. We're going to come back to God eventually. It's just a question of how long it's going to take. We're all going to die anyways. What do you think is going to happen when you die? That's what the main question is all about. The one thing I would agree with Morgoth against Dangerfield is that Dangerfield is saying there's going to be a white diaspora to Southeast Asia. And guys, it's so great. And I do that to an extent about Ghana. I talk about the benefits of going there economically, but I would refrain from pushing race mixing. I wouldn't try to encourage that. You got to acknowledge that, yes, the fact that your country is wealthy that's the reason why you can go to this country. But Dangerfield wants Europe to persist. But then you got to understand that your number can only ever be very few. But then I think he said he, he acknowledged that. So again, I can't find much fault with Dangerfield because he did actually cover his bases. He said, I don't expect or even advocate that anywhere more than any significant number of people are ever going to do this because he doesn't he doesn't think they will by their own natural impulse so we're just talking about different psychological types here i guess i would say that's true danger field but but still you probably don't want to advertise it anyways just for good measure hasta luego amigos